Good afternoon. We have a very hot weekend ahead of us with mostly sunny skies, mostly light winds. Today, a high near 88 Sioux Falls, 90 Aberdeen, 100 in Pier and in Rapid City with a chance of isolated thunderstorms. Those will continue overnight, otherwise mostly clear skies, 70 are low Sioux Falls, 69 in Aberdeen and Pier, and 70 in Rapid City. We'll take a look at the incoming heat coming up as we begin midday in Kelloland. Live from Kelloland Media Group, midday in Kelloland. The report is in. Coming up, we're going to have the latest on the efforts and costs to preserve taxidermy at the Delbridge Museum. Plus, a local woman has made a business out of her love for reading. We're going to hear from her coming up. Good afternoon, and thanks for having us. Uh, we're learning more about the animal mounts within the Delbridge Museum at the Great Plains Zoo. A review from a Mart Conservation came back and was presented to the working group designated to come up with a plan for the animals. To create the review, two conservators and two taxidermists spent five days surveying the animals on site in February. During a work group meeting this morning, it was noted that the survey found 50% of the collection was in overall good condition. In order for the Great Plains Zoo to restore the collection, the review estimated it would cost around $850,000. However, the zoo has an overall estimated cost between $6 million and $7 million that includes construction of a new building for the animals, restoration, and handling the arsenic hazards. So now the Dell Bridge Group has a question in front of them. Should the mount stay or go? Kelloland's Lauren Salk will tell us what's next for the group tonight. Today is the last day to report any flood damage to FEMA. The South Dakota Office of Emergency Management is encouraging both individuals and businesses to fill out the online form. State officials say the data collection is crucial for seeking a presidential disaster declaration. To submit your flood damage report, you can find links on our website. In weather, it's quite hot out there, out west especially, Megan is true dan we already have 90s in western south dakota to start your afternoon and those hot temperatures are going to move into eastern kettle land as we head through the day tomorrow at least right now though some sunshine here in sioux falls 81 degrees at southeast wind at about 15 miles an hour as we head around the region there's that 97 in rapid city with some hazy sunshine right now a north breeze at nine miles an hour it's 92 in Pine Ridge, 90 in Phillip, 97 in Buffalo, 85 in Aberdeen, 78 in Watertown and Brookings, and 82 in Yankton. Like I said, those hot temperatures are going to start spreading as we head through the next couple of days. Our winds are pretty light right now at 10 to 20 miles an hour. They'll stay in that range as we head overnight tonight and into the day tomorrow. On satellite, just a couple of clouds. Nothing is coming out of those clouds yet. Now, we are watching the chance of severe weather as we head through this afternoon. But here's some good news. We try to get rid of that wildfire smoke as we head through today and into tomorrow. Here's a look at our severe weather risk. A level one out of five there in green, mainly central and western South Dakota. Strong winds and small hail are going to be our main threats. For today, it is going to be a hot day with mostly sunny skies, 88 Sioux Falls, 90 in Aberdeen, 100 in Pier, and 100 in Rapid City, with some isolated thunderstorms possible by the afternoon and evening. Some of those could continue overnight, otherwise mostly clear, mostly light winds, 70 are low Sioux Falls, 69 in Aberdeen and Pier, and 70 in Rapid City. Tomorrow is going to be just as warm in western South Dakota and warmer here in eastern Kelloland. We'll keep those mostly sunny skies and mostly light winds. 90s and 100 high temperatures. That continues into the day on Sunday with a couple more chances of rain and thunderstorms. We'll take a look at what to expect for the rest of your weekend in just a little bit. Sounds good. Thank you, Megan. You can enjoy some live music tonight and help local animals. There will be a pet food drive tonight at Levitt at the Falls from 7 to 8.30. Donations will benefit the food bank at the Sioux Falls Area Humane Society. The food goes to pet owners in need. Any brand of dog or cat food is going to be accepted, but dry is preferred. Donors will get a free lawn chair rental.
A Sioux Falls woman has turned her passion for books into a business. Sarah Gillis is a self-described obsessive reader and last year started What Sarah Reads. The mobile book trailer pops up at events around Sioux Falls offering what's trending in books in a variety of genres. You'll find a hand-selected, curated uh, selection of books that I have either read personally or authors that I stand behind. I love sharing everything from fantasy to romance to popular fiction and even some classic literature pieces. What Sarah Reads will be at Severance Brewing Company in downtown Sioux Falls tomorrow afternoon from 2 until 4. To national developments, President Joe Biden wrapped up the NATO summit in Washington with a solo press conference. But questions centered more around the president's campaign run than foreign policy as he continues to lose support from some congressional Democrats. Willie James Inman has details from the White House. President Biden held a rare press conference Thursday and declared again he will be the Democratic nominee, taking on Donald Trump for the White House. I think I'm the most qualified person to run for president. I beat him once and I will beat him again. The president spent about an hour answering questions from reporters, mostly focused on his fitness to serve. The presidency is the most straining job in the world and it's 24-7. How can you say you'll be up for that next year? in two years, in four years. I just gotta just pace myself a little more. Pace myself. White House aides and supporters say they believe the president knocked it out of the park. He was at his best yesterday. I mean, he is most comfortable when he's talking about policy. On foreign policy, frankly, he was more substantive than 90% of people in Congress. But the president's responses were not flawless. I wouldn't have picked Vice President Trump to be vice president, but I think she was not qualified to be president. Immediately after the event, several more Democratic lawmakers called on Biden to exit the race. The numbers, the trajectory, what Americans feel in their bones right now suggest not only that Joe Biden would lose this race, but that he or we would lose the Senate and the House. Minority leader Hakeem Jeffries met with President Biden Thursday night and conveyed concerns from some of his members. CBS News has learned dozens of lawmakers are considering calling on Biden to drop out over the next few days. Willie James Inman, CBS News, the White House. Biden is headed back out to the campaign trail today, making his pitch to voters in the battleground state of Michigan. Former President Donald Trump has no public events scheduled today as he still considers who is going to be his vice presidential nominee. Still ahead, a new...